Busy day today. <laughs> Busy day. Today we here are here at Moto Camp Bulgaria where our motorcycle is stranded. Uh, and it's stranded because we had a wire loom catch fire. Uh, basically a large section of 10 gauge wire between the positive lead and the ABS computer shorted on the frame and ended up catching fire yep. and burning a lot of our wire loom. So we're going to go through the process of removing the old loom and putting in a new loom. It's going to be good times. Good time. Enjoy. <laughs> In the case of the G650GS, we've actually removed all of the uh, plastic panels, the plastic panel on the top, and then all the plastic panels on the side, so we can get good access to everything. And uh, from there, we'll go into removing the battery, and then uh, taking out the old wire harness, removing all the stuff that gets in the way, so we can get access to everything. the two bikes next to each other we're gonna basically use this bike to determine where we're gonna run all the wires as an example we'll just take the covers off and we'll just use that but we'll, we're gonna leave the wiring harness alone but we're also gonna inspect the wiring harness while we're looking at everything and then for this bike we're gonna put in the new harness pin and a washer you pull those from here and then there's you should be able to loosen these and there's your oil reservoir and then we're gonna tie it up to the handlebars so it's supported snip pliers are gonna come in handy so uh, we've already actually pulled this wire harness out once already this wire, ha wire harness has been rebuilt we replaced the burn section with the wire and um, we've actually put it in so what you're seeing here is not the original harness installation so this particular harness is gonna have a lot less zip ties in it because we just use minimal zip ties in order to troubleshoot the old harness and make sure we didn't have any other electrical faults so um, Let's start, let's start pulling out the old harness. So most of these connectors actually 
aren't are, are different enough that you don't have to worry about them but ones that are similar we've actually gone through the process and labeled them you can see we've got two red pieces of tape here know that those connect uh, we had one section here where we used two white pieces but we named them B so these are all ways that you can mark them so you know which connectors go back together in this case these are two black ones so. Should have four connectors removed at the very top of this uh, fuse panel. So we go. Yeah, we should have these, and then also this one here. Uh, but that actually comes with the new wire bundle, so you don't have to worry about pulling that one. All right. To make things easier, we're gonna pull these two screws. There's one screw on each side, and that'll allow you to uh, take this hole few section out. This is a little tight. It's gonna take some uh, take some gentle prying to get these this section out. So the new wire harness is going to actually have these relays already built into it. These ones here. The only thing you have to actually pull and replace um, are these these connectors here. So first we'll start with these three, and then you'll have to pull these three on this side. These ones are pretty obvious. Can't mess them up. That's a two pin. This one is a three pin, and of course the next one is a four pin fairly simple and then we'll move to these ones by the way the one thing that will help you especially in our case with a bike with 135,000 kilometers about 85,000 miles is uh, we went through and we cleaned these up with contact cleaner to make the job a little easier there you go and this, all this wiring harness here is actually going to stay in the bike. So this is not part of the main wiring harness. This is an auxiliary harness that connects to the main wiring harness. And then you'll have all this. Now this is the tricky part, is uh, getting this out from underneath here. As you can see, we have a huge reservoir here. That's not going, this is the uh, reservoir for the um, uh, anti-coolant for the antifreeze for the radiator so we're gonna have to actually pull that as well so this is the reservoir for the radiator and we're just gonna pull this and then a uh, little bit of tug on it it should come right out it's a little tricky to get back in but it's much easier to get out there you go when you put it back in this little tab has to fit all the way in a little hole back there so uh, this plastic tray has to come out right here and the two bolts are on the front side so we'll pull those next all right so this thing comes out with this part and there's also one on top. That's a little tricky to get out because you have to have enough gap to get this out. Ah, come on, bugger. As you can see, if you work it, you can get it out. There you go, all right. This one's a little more tricky. So this one, this one might be a little easier to pull it out through the actual top and move it over because there's a um, there's an ABS brake line that goes between here. There you go, got it out. So now we're gonna pull this little tray out. 
we're going to pull this whole wire assembly from the top up and then just kind of slowly slowly jimmy this so you can get this out from the bottom it's going to be tricky it's going to take a little bit of patience another easy way to do it is if you take the fan and move it out and then you won't have that little knob to fight in the back with it so I've also found that if you move the radiator fan over just slightly, then you have a little bit better chance of getting that tray out. Okay, it's free. Did it without moving the fan. Took a little bit of Jimmy in though. But moving the fan might help. Honestly, that's probably the hardest part of uh, removing, the, um, removing the main wire bundle, getting this top part out. Once you get this top part out, the rest of it is just kind of going along and unplugging as you go. Not too bad. All right, as you can see, we've made good progress. The entire center section has been pulled out. So now we're gonna work at the top part of the bike and move the dashboard here, and then we'll remove all the blinkers and the lights um, wires so that we can remove it all the way down here to release it. three pin connector for the headlamp. Ours is a little different because we replaced our headlamp with a Cyclops LED, but it should still be the same procedure. You should just plug this three pin into this connector. But this connector is very difficult. So you might have to put some contact solution in there and just gently, gently, delicately open it up with a screwdriver so you can get it off. We'll definitely clean this up later so it'll make it easier. <sighs> All right, ta-da. All right, now we're gonna pull the turn signals. Just remove this little Torx bolt here. And once that's free, you pull this out. And the only way you can get access to this is actually to remove this cover. So that's next. clip right here so you don't break it. Use a screwdriver to slowly jimmy this. And you'll find there's two leads. There'll be a longer lead. The brown one will go to the outside. You can see the difference. This brown one's longer. And then once that's removed, you can gently, you might have to straighten this one out, you can gently pull this through. Being careful to make sure that they don't get caught up in there and pulled. There you go. All right, in order to get access to the horn lead, we actually had to uh, pull the front nose off of the bike. So there's four torque bolts. So we already had this pulled, but basically one Torx bolt holds the horn up to the frame, and then you just pull this connector. Voila. And then there'll be one more connector right here underneath this, uh, basically underneath this switch here. And that's quick and easy. And that should be everything for the front. So most of the other zip ties are just standard zip ties, but there's, there's this one right here that requires you to push in these little, little knobs. And then, and then take it out. So just a little patience and you'll be able to get it out. That should be everything for the front wire bundle. Just gotta push that wire through that, that little hole in the bottom oh, yeah, yeah. for the horn. Okay, and there you go. The front portion of the wire bundle has 
five plugs, actually four plugs. One of them is a light bulb for your parking light. And uh, the two the two little wires for your uh, turn signals on each side. Now there's a couple more wires to the front assembly. We've already removed this from the air, air section. There's this plug here, which just pops out. Then we have this one here. So we'll pull that as well. Okay. And then we trace it down. It looks like one to the uh, fill, or the water, the water temperature gauge. There you go. Looks like the high, high temperature sensor. And that's all those sections. Okay, so we'll just kind of carefully pull it all through to the center portion. This plug is a little challenging to fit through there, but there you go. And we've got the whole front end of the wire bundle all sitting here. We'll continue to keep going backwards. So this is the brand new wire bundle wiring loom. Um, you can see it comes with the relay, comes with a positive terminal, the negative terminal, and then it comes with this entire brand new box. So like we've, we've disconnected the four here, we've disconnected all these three here and these three here. And we remove this whole box and up to this point then we've also done the front section which included uh, that little section there, the sensor, this plug, uh, so you'll actually, this looks like you'll have to put the new cap from the old one onto the new one. There's no cap on this for some reason. The new sensor for the high temperature. And then of course for the lights, the turn signals. Horn. The horn, yes the horn, the dashboard, and then of course your parking light. And it didn't come with a bulb, we took the old bulb out and put the put the new bulb in the harness for the parking light. Okay, now the rest of what we have to pull is like the main fuse box, the jumper terminal for the positive lead. We've got the, the ABS computer, um, the starter motor, some other sensors and things. We'll be pulling all those. And then we'll head over here to this other side. More sensors, the two coil inputs another sensor switch and then of course the main computer these go to the uh, fuel pump for the fuel gauge or fuel fuel indicator and for the um, fuel pump and then of course some more sensors here and then uh, that's it so this is all we have left to do now to pull and then we'll, uh, we'll be on our way and check out the fuse box it even comes with brand new fuses <laughs> We have spares. Yeah. All right, to make things a lot easier, it's best to remove this brace. Actually, I don't think you can even pull it without pulling this brace. So there's four uh, little torque bolts that connect the brace. We'll remove those. We'll also remove the three torque bolts for this uh, computer hold down the computer. All right, now this one. This is a little tricky. So best thing to do is put a little flat tip in there and gently work this until you get this cover off. All right, it's gonna take some patience. Sometimes they get stuck and gunked up, especially when you're riding through lots and lots of dirt. But as, as you pull as you slow, as you pull it up, it should start to release. See, so just take it take it nice and easy. You'll see as you pull it, the whole thing will kind kind of pop up. It's basically aligning all the locking pins so that you can easily pull it out. So just take your time, not forcing it. You don't want to break these switches. 
I mean, worst case, if you do break the plug, it does come with a new harness, but you'd rather not avoid that. So you can see not now, you can see where it's loose, and it'll just pop right off. So you're just freeing up those two lock, those four locking pins. There will also be a wire bundle that's zip tied to the back of this little connector housing. There you go. The fuse panel, just twists and then pull out. It's in a little little hole right here. Easy peasy. Right next to the fuse panel is another connector, which uh, just has a Phillips head that bolts onto this little support piece. And there you go. And then you should, most of the support piece should come off now. You'll pull this little blue one. And then one of the last things on the support piece is this little sensor plug you'll pull that and then this part actually doesn't really come off very easily so I just left the support bar here but you should have plenty of clearance now that you can get the harness out from underneath here just leave that as it is also this one is a little tricky the, um, the 12 volt outlet plug that's down here the auxiliary power that one could be tricky just because it's right next to the frame and the uh, engine. So uh, take some patience there, but we will remove it here. We have another plug here that's to the left of the computer. And that'll come out. Now we're almost done with the whole section back here. Now the very last two on the very back part of the harness will be these. So be very careful with these. I've actually reinforced these because these are a common issue. These wires are so thin. They go to the fuel pump and they also go to the fuel uh, low sensor. Um, just be very careful with those. You can see these wires. These wires are so thin that they're prone to uh, being damaged. Thus we've reinforced them here with that. So be careful with that. Make sure it comes through this cover here. Very, very careful. These wires break, could be bad. All right, now we've got another sensor here, right above the uh, fuel filter. And then we've got another sensor connector down here. And then another plug right there. There you go. And then we have two more before the center section is uh, cleared. Yeah, we have these two coils. So we did take notice that the purple lead is on the right. Um, I don't know if it matters too much, honestly, but we figure put it back the way it came out. So these pop up. You can just kind of pry them up with your finger and then just give them a light tug and they'll come out. Almost done. So one of the hardest connectors we had was the ABS plug. So. Uh, we actually wired up a line to the top because it probably took us a good half an hour of just jimmying it with a small screwdriver and taking being ever so careful. We did connect the line so we can pull up on it. When you pull up on it, it releases it a little bit. And then you have to go in and kind of just gently maneuver it back and forth while you lift up on it. And it'll start to come off as well. <sighs> Much easier. This one was one of the hardest plugs we had to do though. Yeah. For sure. We'll remove this little cover because there's a couple connectors behind here. There's two of these uh, torque, torque bolts. All right, that'll give you access to, looks like three plugs. They're all different, so you don't have to label them. Just make sure you get one. These ones can be pretty challenging. Since we moved them recently back and forth and cleaned up the contacts, it's much easier. There you go. One, two, three. And then we'll remove the main wire, the ground wire that goes to the block. It's pretty straightforward. There we go. Okay. And then down here. Underneath the uh, regulator will be a, a connector, and then this one sits right in here as well. 
with. So you disconnect both of those. Let's see. One. Come on. This one's hard. Yeah, they are pretty the tabs to hold them on pretty good. I guess that's the point, right? Mm-hmm. So this again, these take some patience. It's gonna be hard. All right, so it looks like all the leads from the bottom are off. We do still have the starter motor. All right, now we're gonna pull the uh, the lead to the starter motor. Come on, it's down there pretty good. All right, it's a 10 millimeter. I use an extension to get past the uh, exhaust exhaust header. All right, once you get that pulled, then the starter motor will come out. Or starter, starter motor lead, sorry. Right here. And we're so close to being done. And then we got, we actually realized we forgot one back here where the computer was. It's right here. There you go. I think we're almost there. Got a couple more we gotta work on. All right, this is something that's specific to our bike. It's a Touratech sprocket cover. Uh, the one that comes from the factory is a plastic cover, but I'm fairly certain you're gonna have to remove that in order to get the sensor off. It's a teeny, 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 tiny bolt too. Yep. A little 5.5 millimeter. I'm not sure exactly what the sensor is. I think it's for the neutral, but I'm not 100% sure. But it does have to come off because it's part of the harness. All right, so the next thing is uh, this to come out. It's going to make your job drastically easier if you remove this attachment here for the rear shock. You just take these two uh, two bolts out, and then you can swing it down, and that'll make getting all this out a lot easier. Ready? Yep, let's take it out. I think this thing's ready to go. The trick here is just to kind of take them one at a time. The biggest problem is the, the big plug for the ABS sensor. There we go. Look at that. Oh, we got chicken. <laughs> there you go. Oh, what a mess. All right, in the case of our problem, um, I think what happened to our particular harness fire, it didn't, it didn't quite start a fire, but it burned through the wire. I think what happened is we had, we had basically this portion of the wire bundle uh, rubbed through to the frame and basically caught it a, a cause of short from the positive lead to here because we had a long section of wire that burnt from here to here and then on its way down to to the ABS sensor or ABS computer. Didn't quite go to the computer, it stopped about here, but we had a good section of wire that burned from here to the positive lead. So you can see about a foot and a half of wire burned. And then that wire, all the plastic melted to the other wires. And when we removed some of that wire, the plastic pulled off the insulation and we had to re-insulate all these wires. So could we use this harness? Yes, we could, but it wouldn't be I ideal for a long, long-term traveling like we're doing. If it was just a back and forth to work bike, then I probably would do it, save the money. But in our case, this whole harness is going in the junk pile. We might use it for some spare wires, but that's about it. Now we're gonna put in the new harness. Join us for the next tutorial video as we install an entirely new wire harness. Thanks for watching our video. If you like our channel, please consider visiting our Patreon page and checking out the benefits we provide our supporters. The Patreon link is in the description below.